Welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. Stand out, don't fit in. Welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. Today I have uh, the pleasure to be speaking with uh, an inspiring individual. He is a dentist who has trained extensively in uh, neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, hypnotherapy and human needs psychology. He is a coach and a mentor with his uh, company and training organization, The Confident Dentist, helping dentists improve their communication, rapport and leadership skills. Uh, Barry Olton, Welcome. I'm uh, delighted to be speaking with you today. Thanks for having me, Aggie. Thank you very much. That's a very nice introduction as well. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, it's uh, I have interviewed quite a few people from my podcast through the uh, couple of years I've been doing it. You are the second colleague of mine that uh, I interview. So it's, Myself uh, and Drew. <laughs> um, Barry, I wanted to uh, start by asking you to share with us... Uh, a key defining moment in your journey of uh, self-growth that has led you to where you are today. Okay, so I'll give you a bit of preamble to the key defining moment. Sure. Uh, The preamble was that, uh, so I've owned my practice for 20 years. And uh, about 13, 14 years ago, I was happily married to whom I thought was the love of my life. We had two young daughters. I was running my practice. For me, life was pretty good. Uh, And then I found out that my wife was having a two-year affair with a friend of mine. Um, And I pretty much lost the plot. I had panic attacks. I had some mental kind of breakdown issues. I I was suffering from, I, I mean, I probably I was suffering from anxiety and things like that. I didn't recognize the anxiety. I recognized the panic attacks because they were instant. And I did what every sensible person would do in that situation. And I went and walked on hot coals with Tony Robbins, which, you know, obviously you were crewing for that. So I went on Tony Robbins and there were several things that happened within that weekend. Mm -hmm. I did it three times, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I got a hug off the man himself. So I was delighted with that. So, Um, There were several things that happened during that weekend that simply blew me away Mm -hmm. about understanding how we process information, right? And there were, I won't go into it, the full story, but basically there were 9,000 people in the room in Excel from 63 countries. Mm -hmm. And we did this one exercise, which took about half an hour. And it basically gave me this understanding of how we process information, how we create and generate our emotional state and how we form our internal representation based upon a lot of our physiology. Mm -hmm. And the process that we went through, just honestly, it it gave me goosebumps, it blew me away, and I thought, holy moly, I need to learn more about this. So I went off and found out a bit more about what was going on and what this all was and discovered that what Tony Robbins was really using in most of his presentations is neuro-linguistic programming. Mm-hmm. So I went off and learnt. I did my practitioner level at NLP. I did my master practitioner level. I became a master hypnotherapist, coach certified and qualified, and just got all these qualifications, which really helped me deal much better with the breakdown of the marriage and the divorce, becoming a single father. It was two years later, I met Chloe, my wife. We now have, so I had two daughters, and I now have two sons. Mm-hmm. And the NLP has enabled me to handle life better and to generate an incredibly successful small practice. As I said to you, it's three and a half days a week, me and a hygienist, million pound turnover, very easy to do, Uh, you know, hard work, don't get me wrong, but the systems we developed based out of NLP and communication Mm -hmm. is now what I'm taking out into dentistry and sharing and teaching others Mm -hmm. because it's made such a big difference to the finances and the running of the business. But more than that, it's made a difference to our lives. And when I run my course, people come and give me testimonials and say, Do you know, I, th- I thought it was about dentistry, but it really isn't. It's about life. And it's, it's been mind blowing. And I have to say, I am humbled by the 
feedback and the, the information that people give me. And I am just sharing what I've learned, right? I, I can't claim it. I've taken it and put it into dentistry, but I can't claim this information. It's And it's not Tony Robbins's information either. This is human need psychology. This is how we tick and how we process. And so it's just enabling people to become consciously aware mm -hmm. of what they subconsciously already knew. Mm -hmm. And so it's just bringing it to the surface so that people can go, I'm going to do this on purpose. I'm going to, you know, action this on purpose as opposed to doing things by accident, which is what we do because we're never taught how to communicate. And once we're taught how to understand the communication and to communicate more clearly, then we can use things on purpose for the betterment of us, our loved ones, in my profession, our patients, mm -hmm. and just making things better as a whole. And it's it's phenomenal. It's been a wonderful journey. And I'm loving it, still sharing. <laughs> and I can see your, your, your energy is just uh, coming through over this side. <laughs> I had that. Like, listen, it's funny, actually, because I've got two older daughters that okay. a lot of my stories are about them growing up and and mm -hmm. how I learned to communicate better and we had a discussion two nights ago actually around the dinner table when my eldest actually asked me about some bits and I went ah, I'd love to tell you and I was sharing she went my god you you got really not angry but passionate and I went yeah I'm really passionate about sharing this and I helped her understand how she processes information because I've been I've been quite hands off in telling my kids I share by uh, doing, mm -hmm. um, but I have resisted telling because obviously both of my girls, they actually live in two houses, 50% of the time with me, 50% of the time elsewhere. And yeah. the elsewhere influence is very different from mine. And so I was delighted that actually two days ago, my eldest was like, so tell me a bit more about that. And I'm like, yeah. And my youngest said, daddy, can I come on your training course? And I was mm. like, <laughs> this is that to me she really wants to come i'm like oh my god uh final um, that to me is true success i cannot wait for her to come on the course and um see what she thinks about it really. do you train just dentists Barry, or do you train no. uh, oh it's general okay so at the moment aggie it's such a new company that it is i'm, I'm taking it into what i know best right which is dentistry sure the thing is it's not bespoke to dentistry. It really is a general subject, as you know, right? Mm -hmm. And so whilst I own the URL, the Confident Dentist, and I'm running the Confident Dentist Academy, I also own the Confident Vet, the Confident Lawyer, the Confident Consultant, the Confident Parent, the Confident Teen. And the aim of the game is I want to get this out. Uh, and it will be tailored to each of those. But that tailoring is only really probably the last... 30, 40% of the training course. Mm -hmm. you know, the whole preamble to it of understanding the basics of communication, understanding how we process information, understanding eye scan patterns. Do you know about eye scan patterns? I've heard of them, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so understanding how somebody is processing information, not what they're processing, mm -hmm. enables you to communicate much more clearly. And so all of that, is relevant to anybody in any situation anywhere. So yes, I I am wanting to share with everyone in dentistry and beyond. That's the mm -hmm. aim of the game. Awesome. And tell me about confidence then, because the, the title of the, the company and the course is the, the confident dentist, and you said the confident uh, with other professions as well. Yeah. So What's lacking in people's uh, confidence? Why are they not confident, do you think? Is it a matter of uh, a skill set that is missing or is it something else? So to me, confidence isn't a skill. Mm -hmm. uh, confidence is a state. Confidence is a state that you can elicit like that in a heartbeat. I think uh, there are, it's multifaceted to a degree, right? I think we are, as human beings, we are inbred to focus on the negative, Mm -hmm. You know, if I had, and you know, me included, right? So if I got, uh, if I got 50 testimonials from a course saying that was phenomenal, you've changed my life. And I get these, you've, ch I haven't changed anybody's life. I hold no responsibility for changing anybody's <laughs> life. I hold total responsibility for being able to explain things really well for them to then go and change their own lives. 
Yeah. So I still get joy from receiving those testimonials. But if I got 50 of those going, oh, my God, that was amazing, and one going, what a pile of crap, your natural default is to focus on the 2%, the one, the 2% that said you're a load of crap. And so I think that we are inherently uh, bred to think about the negativity. Now, confidence is a state. And as you know, states are created by internal representations, what we think. And what we think is either a picture, a sound, a movie, some self-talk or some feelings. And that internal representation affects how we feel. Mm -hmm. And it's also influenced massively by our physiology. So if I said to you, describe somebody, Aggie, to me, that you look and go, wow, they look really confident. Describe how they would look. It would be, first of all, the, the way that they, uh, their posture, their stance. Yeah, they're yeah, right. really, really rising up. So they would be, they would out, be uh, tall shoulders where? Shoulders, Forward or back? Uh, back. He- chin, chin up or up, down? Chin up. Okay. Yeah. On their face, a look of fear or a look of certainty? Certainty, for sure. Right. Yeah. Now, that person that is in that posture that feels and looks like they've got that certainty, what's their internal representation, Aggie? Is it a positive one of self-reliance, capability, knowing that even if they don't know what to do, they know that they can find a solution? Somebody that believes that you can get over anything in life, Mm -hmm. somebody that believes that they are resourceful, even if they don't have the resources right now. So confidence is just a state because everybody listening to this has at multiple times in their life or at least once felt confident. And so you can go, right, let's do confidence. So I would get you to stand shoulders back, chin up and say something nice to yourself. Think about a time in your life that you are so confident, unstoppable. That's how you create confidence. So why is it confidence? Why are people lacking confidence? Honestly, because they have poor internal representations they beat Mm -hmm. themselves up they ask themselves really crappy questions like why me why did that happen to me why is it i'm not i'm not earning any money or they give themselves really bad affirmations i could never make a million pounds i could never do that not in my town not in my practice they give themselves bullshit reasons for not doing something Mm -hmm. right because we are capable, we are resourceful, we could do anything we want. Mm-hmm. And it's simply changing state, which changes your behaviors and taking massive action. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. If you change your state and you take a massive action, you get completely different results. At least then you're empowered to decide, did I want the old results or the new results? And for me, I'll take the new results and then learn and adapt and change, mm-hmm. you know, and, and evolve. And it's growth and then giving back. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> does that answer the question? <laughs> yes, it certainly does. It is, I, uh, you said that it, it's a state, which I understand. It was a question I was just trying to see what your approach. Uh, yeah. It is a state, state and we can tap into it, it in a heartbeat. Yeah. It takes practice, right? Because exactly, you know, one of my old coaches used to say, used to say, still says that life is a series of mountains when you're at the top of a high, valleys when you're at a really bad low, and exercets. And what that means is you could be at the top of your game Mm -hmm. or really feeling crappy, and you could get hit by an an exercet, like your child getting knocked over by a car like coronavirus coming along and closing your practice Mm -hmm. you might have been at the top of your game or here you have influence over these you don't have influence maybe over the exocet and actually when you're down and the exocet comes we have the capability of changing that of reframing you know language in our heads the story we tell ourselves the questions we ask ourselves ask yourself a better question like What can I make the best of this situation? What can I do now differently that will get me better results? What can I do to win today? You know, let's just focus on winning today. Let's win this day. And then tomorrow we'll win tomorrow. But let's just win today. What can I do to improve myself? What do I do? What can I do to improve the relationships around me? 
and you come up with answers. The thing about the subconscious mind is if I make a statement to you, Aggie, you can either reject it or accept it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Like a statement of, we're on a podcast. That's a statement. You either go yes or no. If I say to you, Aggie, what, what kind of podcast are we on right now? Mm -hmm. You have to search for an answer because it's a question. Yeah. Well, we do that internally. If you ask yourself a question, your subconscious mind will search and find the answer. So let me ask myself a question. Why me? Why has this happened to me? Why did my wife have an affair? Sorts, finds the answer because you're an arsehole. And then you start to believe it. And you tell yourself something enough, you start to believe it. Mm -hmm. Conversely, you ask yourself a better question. How can I take what occurred and make the best of it? Do you know what? I can learn from this. That divorce at the moment for two, three years was in my head the worst thing that ever happened. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. It's led me to what I'm doing now. I've found my purpose in many respects and my passion which some people say, well, that's obvious when you talk about it. And so it's the best thing that ever happened, Aggie. So I now take anything that happens to me as feedback, not failure. And life is happening for me, not to me. And I now believe that anything that happens, that people would go, oh, that's sad, that's negative. I kind of go, do you know what? It's a lesson. What can I learn from this? You ask yourself a better question, you respond in a different way. Mm -hmm. If I something happens and I go, oh, why me? I find that you spiral down into a pit and then you end up dragging people into the pit with you. You ask yourself, right, what can I learn from this? What can I take from this? What can I make things better? You end up taking people up with you. Yeah. It's uh, as uh, Tony Robbins says that the quality of our life is the quality of the questions we ask ourselves. So if we yeah. ask better quality questions, or if we focus on the solution rather than the problem itself, we'll get better answers for sure. 100%. 100%. Yeah. But I wanted, there's another thing that I wanted your take on. And yes. that's uh, because I understand you did some selling course in the past and you told me that it changed you very much selling in uh, combination with uh, the NLP training. So yeah. I, wanted to, uh, I wanted you to tell me uh, why do you think People are reluctant in selling. What's what's holding them back, and how can can they go around that and change that and and sell with confidence? Oh, I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> let me take you back a few years. Right when I was a kid, um, I thought. Well, the simple answer is the reason people don't want to sell is they have their own limiting beliefs about what selling is. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid, and really up until about 12, 13 years ago, I thought selling was a dirty word. Uh, I thought salesmen were kind of icky, greasy, unscrupulous people selling things to old ladies that they didn't want. They were secondhand car salesmen. They were people that knocked on your door, selling your tat and crap. And there was no way in my life I was going to go into a sales position because I believed that had I become a salesman, I would have got the rejection from my dad. I also witnessed that because my brother, we didn't realize my brother was one of the first people to have hepatitis C. And in the time that he had it, it, they didn't, it wasn't called hepatitis C. It was called hepatitis non A non B because they couldn't, they didn't know what it was. And he was really ill through uni and he didn't uh, do as well as he wanted to or expected to. And he landed a fantastic sales job with a fantastic company. But I can remember the day came in. He had a brand new red BMW three series, absolutely beautiful. But my dad and him had a major bust up because my dad wanted us to be in a profession. He wanted the best for us. And in my dad's model of the world, that was to be within a profession. So I witnessed this whole bust up between my dad and my brother about him being a salesman. So by far and away, I was, there was no way I was going to go into sales. I went into dentistry. Well, good little boy did what I was told, went into a profession. And so when it came to explaining treatment to patients, I in, inadvertently, I misdirected them to choose often the cheaper lower quality product. I'll give you an, an example of that because I still had integrity, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say Aggie got a broken lower left six. 
And I would turn around and say, Aggie, you've got a broken lower left six. You know, I could crown that. But a cheaper option is for me to fill it right now, probably with amalgam. And invariably, every single patient would go, OK, let's fill it. Mm -hmm. And I would do a fantastic filling. Now, evidence-based dentistry says 40% of the tooth is missing, multiple fractures. The best treatment for that is an indirect restoration. And what I should have done in order to serve them better mm -hmm. would be to encourage them to choose the better option. Yeah. And if they were not able to financially, then that's absolutely fine. But I actually put people off from choosing the best option. So I then learned NLP and I did this thing called wealth mastery, which is dealing with my own limiting beliefs about wealth and about money. And what I learned is that the word to sell comes from a Norwegian word, selje, which is to serve. And I truly believe that if, if I don't get somebody on my training course, I'm not serving them. Because if you come on my training course, I know that you will 10X your investment, you'll improve your finances, you'll improve your relationships, you'll serve your family, your patients, your friends more. If you don't come on the course, I've not served you. And it's, it's imperative to me that I sell to you and serve you to get you on my training course. Because when you do, you come and you go, my God, that was, that was worth a hundred times what I spent on coming on the course. Mm. It's the same with patients. If I don't utilize my skills of communication to explain to them that the indirect restoration is the best option and I have solutions for spreading out the cost, it is a bigger investment but it's better value. People say to me, oh, that's expensive. And I go, okay, can I just, can I give you some feedback on that? It's a higher investment without a shadow of a doubt. This mm -hmm. crown costs considerably more than the filling, yet it's much better value because what it's going to do, and then I'll sell to their deeper drivers. And the deeper drivers are no hassle, no problems, looks great, feels great, going to last well, going to look at it all of these things and then they go okay i get it i see it so people are against selling because they have the wrong interpretation of what selling is mm -hmm. selling is serving and if i serve correctly and my patient still selects what is best for them then that's then i'm serving and if if right now so i had an example just before lockdown we knew things were happening I had a patient fractured up a left six and i said exactly that i used my language skills Mm -hmm. And he said, look, I, I don't have another contract. I said, in which case, what I'm going to suggest is that we both know that the ideal solution for this tooth is to crown it. Yes, we do, Barry. Great. Why don't we do the best filling we can right now? Allow me to wrap over some composite on a couple of those little fracture lines. Let's, let's steady the ship and get this comfortable. And then when the timing's right for you, we'll crown it further down the line. Mm-hmm. And so I humbly believe that I serve that patient because whilst the crown is the best solution for that tooth, it's not the best solution for him and his life and his family right now. Yes. I also know that that crown is in the reservoir, ready to be chosen at the right time. Mm -hmm. So I know there's 800 quid coming at some point down the line. Why? Because he's not going to go anywhere else because I'm serving him. And then I'm, I, it just, and it's so simple to do. So how did I get around the sales thing was I changed my belief that selling is serving mm -hmm. and that unless I am at least giving the best options and encouraging them and getting out of my own way, mm -hmm. then I'm not serving. That's fantastic. You know, you reminded me with what you said about selling equals uh, serving. Yeah. Something that a mentor of mine says that, uh, Love what you do so much that you feel you're doing the world a disservice if they don't get it. And that's exactly what I'm getting from you by what you just said. I like that. Say that one more time for me. Please. <laughs> uh, it's uh, love, love what you do. Uh, so, yeah. Love what you do so much so that you feel that you're doing a world a disservice if they don't get it. That. That is just, uh, and that's a new phrase I've never heard before that beautifully describes where I'm at. Mm. So, yeah, you uh, reminded me of that. Yeah, that's well, uh, Dean Graziosi. That, uh, so, that's... thank you for giving me that. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, <laughs> just uh, quickly, you said that you mentioned a wealth mastery course that uh, allowed you to uh, 
discover some limiting beliefs you had about yeah. money? Was that the, the Tony Robbins course or some other? No, it is what uh, I've included in my training course. It's a very, it's a very short uh, section of the two days is, okay. is to help part of my sales course is to help you overcome your own limiting beliefs. Now, mm-hmm. I, you don't air them, but there is a six step process to overcoming a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, all of our limiting beliefs came from somebody else. You know, my limiting belief about wealth and about money came and was instilled to me probably between the years of zero and seven, mostly by my dad, Mm -hmm. who had massive positive intent, right? It wasn't a case of, son, I'm teaching you that rich people are dirty and they're really unscrupulous. It just came about through experience. And I learned from my dad, right? And so there's a six step process. It's dead easy. So I get people, I give people a, a, a questionnaire. They mm-hmm. go through and score it. That's their homework, one of their homeworks on day one. Yeah. Then they come back on day two and we belief bust. We get rid of limit, they get rid of some of their limiting beliefs. And it takes oh, literally two minutes. And it's life changing because once you get rid of that belief, you go, holy crap, I can. I can be as wealthy and rich and successful as I choose. It's just that previously there was a limiting belief preventing people from doing it. And I find many, many dentists are in that situation. What's really interesting, Aggie, is when they fill this format, right? You see, I I get some incredibly successful people coming on my training course. And I got a guy, he's so successful. He owns a fantastic referral practice beautiful referral practice with a load of specialists in stunning work stunning practice uber successful um running and dealing with uh, personal relationships at the moment when he filled out this score this score sheet uh, it was no surprise to me that he basically scored zero on all of the 60 questions which meant no limiting beliefs about money right those people that seemingly don't have a lot of money or are struggling financially have all the high scores. And so what we find is those people that are running successful practices, successful financial lives, have very low scores on my questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And those that have high scores are the ones that are struggling financially. Once you get these scores away, and it's it's two minutes, right, per limiting belief, it's dead easy, Mm -hmm. you're then free to go off and earn unlimited amounts of money based on integrity, evidence-based dentistry, and serving and connecting and looking after people. And um, it's just a universal truth that actually the one the one thing, the one things that hold us back are our own limiting beliefs, which are more often than not bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, it's the, the BS, the BS, which is bullshit or belief system. It's, uh... Yes, <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Barry, I want to, uh, this is a fascinating conversation and uh, I, there are many things that I would love to, to speak to you about, but I know <laughs> that we are kind of limited with time. So I'll just ask some quick fire questions as well, which... Uh, I'm very curious to find your take on them. So go for it. What does personal development mean to you? Everything. <laughs> Simple. If you look at you look at uh, so you followed um, you followed Tony Robbins. Have you followed Chloe Madanas? Not very much. No. So the Robbins Madanas uh, Foundation. They've really uncovered and, and discovered and talked about the six human needs. Yeah. Uh, the four basic ones, and then the two that really make people happy. If you want happiness, you've got to search and find the two human needs, which is growth and contribution. Mm -hmm. And so growth for me is my personal development, the growth of me, the growth of my business. And then what I'm, I mean, this is why I'm so bloody happy is I'm growing as I'm developing and then sharing it means I've got growth and contribution almost by accident. I'm ticking the boxes of the two most important human needs for happiness. Mm-hmm. And so personal development, massive. It's everything because that's growth. That's it. Awesome. If you could go back in time and meet your 20-year-old self, 
Yes. What's, what's the one piece of advice you would give him? So that is a really interesting question because um, when I am at my low times, mm -hmm. when I've had low ebbs and low times, and you know, um, I had some, I had some, some challenges mentally. I mean, it's Mental Health Awareness Week this week. I had some mental challenges when uh, I was getting divorced. Mm -hmm. I had some mental challenges a couple of years ago when my mum uh, passed away, but very unexpectedly. And at those times, I would say to myself earlier on to do things differently. And when I'm in my strength and I'm centered, um, I would go back and say very little. Because if I changed anything about the 20 year old self, it wouldn't put me where I am now. And I genuinely even though the struggles at the moment, you know, I've not earned anything since January because of COVID. Um, I was off work during February. I've not earned anything. There's some financial, uh, financial challenges at the moment, but they're creating new opportunities. Yeah. And everything that's coming at me, I'm now in a place where I'm taking it as growth, as personal growth, as mm -hmm. seeing them as exciting, not daunting and scary. And had I changed my 20 year old self, had I given him, some different advice maybe that journey would be different maybe it would be different in a in a in a bad way mm -hmm. maybe i would still be in that loveless marriage that was not serving either of us and maybe i would be horse trade i was horse trading with her without knowing it mm -hmm. it wasn't a complete and utter uh, unadulterated unconditional love and with my insecurities at the time, it was a horse trade. I didn't realize that. Whereas now, you know, in my marriage with Chloe, it's unconditional love. There's no horse trading. Mm. And so, honestly, I wouldn't tell him anything. I'd quite like to tell him the numbers for the lottery. <laughs> but even then, <laughs> even then, I, I have... I look back at all of the financial struggles and the times that we've had that's made me who I am. And I actually quite like me. Absolutely. I'm really quite comfortable. I mean, I know I, I want to lose a bit of weight, Aggie, and I want to get fit. I'm going to get fitter. No, let's that's start this easy. again. That's I'm to going to lose weight and I'm going to get fitter, Aggie. But other than that, honestly, I would go back to my 20 year self. I'd give him a hug and a kiss and say, just continue on your path, mate, because everything works out well. Awesome. That's that's fantastic. If you had a magic wand and you could wave it and change something in the world as it is today, what would that be? Whoa. God, the, there's quite a few things that you would say that would be easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would love... Let's make this. I would love... I would love everybody to deeply, truly, and connect and understand that community is everything. Okay. It's not necessarily about waving a magic wand and going, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of that. I think what I would want is people understanding that community is one of the most important things that we can create in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that that community then enables us as uh, as nations and as um, humans to overcome everything that is then thrown at us. We need the lows as well as the highs. You know, you give somebody a million pounds and say you never have to work again. It's down to their character and their circle of friends and the environment as to whether they snort a load of cocaine and kill themselves or whether they use that for the good because then you're potentially removing some of the six human needs for them. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't necessarily want to start, you know, healing. Oops, sorry. I don't want to start getting rid of all the negativity. What I want, what I would do with my magic wand is create more community so that people would pull together and um, handle situations differently. I think if there was a stronger sense of community, there would be less fighting there would be less wars though i think in my belief 
which is quite controversial. I think religion is one of the biggest problems in the world because that's it's what has more often than not, it's what's created discord. It's what's created rather than going, you know, we're a community. We might have different beliefs, but let's have a community of the fact that we are, we have beliefs. Let's just share in that, that, I mean, that alone would decrease things mm -hmm. and acceptance and understanding that, you know, you might believe something different from me, but in my model of the world, I accept that you have a different model of the world. And, you know, that would mean that we might not enjoy what one another does, but I can respect that you would choose to do something different. Absolutely. That was that was a bit deep, and it's probably not what most people expect. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been asked that. Thanks. That's oh good. All right. <laughs> never really thought about that. That's a really nice question to answer, to be honest. <laughs> I'm glad you say that. Uh, Barry, is there? I know it was a, a short conversation, but is there anything you were hoping? Uh, that I would ask you and I completely missed it. Anything that you wanted to share? Aggie, I could share for, I've got 28 days training in my head, mate. I could share forever. And I love <laughs> having these conversations. Okay. Um, so this, the, the simple answer is there's one thing. Yeah. Uh, which is some self-promotion for the betterment of our profession. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is over the last 25 years of being a dentist, uh, lot, lots of times I have stumbled upon the ability to give an injection to a patient where the patient says, uh, in, what, in, what injection? I didn't know you'd done it. And because of my NLP, my hypnotherapy and all the other bits, what I've managed to do is to, to distill it into an easily learnt process mm -hmm. that is five videos mm -hmm. delivering one hour's worth of content mm -hmm. Teach dentists, hygiene therapists, and anybody that sticks a needle in somebody how you can easily give an injection without a patient knowing. So my patients, when I say to them, how was your injection? I anticipate their answer being, huh? What? <laughs> what you gave me? Really? No, uh, I didn't know. Didn't feel a thing. Yes. That's what I anticipate every single time. And it's Easy, easy, easy. And so if anybody is interested, mm -hmm. it's a very, very well worth while investment, a small amount of money to invest in finding out how to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Comfortable Dental Injection Technique, and it's available at dentalinjection.com. At dentalinjection.com, when you sign up for it, you then get infographic, you get the five videos, you get the article, you get uh, a few other bits and pieces as well. And then you go off and practice it. It is the one thing that I think has majorly contributed to the financial strength of the practice mm -hmm. because it's major in referrals and recommendations. Because when a patient leaves and goes, blimey, that was amazing. Didn't feel a thing. Their, their anxiety levels decrease. Their acceptance of recommended treatment goes massively up mm -hmm. because why wouldn't I have it done? It's completely comfortable. Most patients, their biggest two fears are fear of the needle and fear of pain. So if we can eradicate the two biggest fears in dentistry, we're changing the face of dentistry. I want every dental student to learn this technique because in a couple of generations time, we change the face of dentistry. If you teach this, teach my technique to every undergraduate and they come out being able to give injections that 90% of the patients go, what injection? Mm -hmm. Dentistry changes. We, we start to abolish the fear and the anxiety in dentistry. That's my mission. Fantastic. Very for the, the people who are listening to this and are not dentists, how they can connect with you if they want to find out more about yourself Perfect. and what you do. Thank you very much. So all of my stuff, uh, is, so my training is, is not for dentists. Uh, it happens to be more dentists come on it. I've had one course actually where I had 14 delegates. We keep the numbers small. Mm -hmm. There's no role play. It's a very comfortable environment. Uh, we interact with one other person mm -hmm. having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And really it's about the journey of a client, the journey in, in our profession. It's the journey of a patient. Uh, but I've had vets on it. I've had uh, lab technicians. I've had all sorts of different people come on the training course and get massive value. 
So I'm at theconfidentdentist.com, which is my kind of umbrella company. Underneath that, then, the training course is influencingsmiles.com. Mm-hmm. But on com- the on the uh, Confident Dentist, there is some free training via a video, uh, language skills, which is what made me a lot more money when I got out my own way. That was phenomenal. And then there's also an hour-long free webinar, and they can connect if they want to come on. I'm going to be launching uh, in the next probably month, I'm going to be launching some business training, uh, which is NLP-based, understanding mm-hmm. business, because, you know, it's it's – it's generic, isn't it? Uh, so connect with me through uh, theconfidentdentist.com. Outstanding. Thank you very much. I want to uh, thank you. I appreciate very much your time. And this has been a fascinating uh, conversation, Barry. Uh, any parting words? Aggie, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm absolutely, uh, oh, I just, I love talking about this stuff. Uh, <laughs> it shows. <laughs> <laughs> and I love implementing it because it, it works. I mean, that's the thing. You know, if you if you just try little little bits. So when you do the training, there's so much content, there's so much information. It can be a little bit, whoa. So what I do then is I send you an email every day for mm-hmm. a month, just going, right, today I want you to do this. You know, implement this, have a tweet with this. And it just helps people make tiny course corrections because it one small correction, one small direction change can make a whole difference in the result and difference in the in the destination. You know, if you imagine you're in a boat and you've got a compass and you just turn to the right one degree, that that movement there and then is tiny, right? But you then extrapolate that out over the next, you know, one, three, five years. What a completely different destination you go. Just the one language skill on my website added two grand a week to my gross turnover. Mm. And so one tiny change made a massive difference. And at least when you become consciously aware of something, you can then choose whether you do it or not. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Thanks for your time, Aggie. Thank you very much indeed. That was uh, that was very enjoyable. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Enjoy wish, the sunshine. I wish you all the best. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Please take a moment to subscribe, rate and review Personal Development Mastery on Apple Podcasts. If you want to know more about me and how I can help you, join my Facebook group Personal Development Mastery. You can either search for it on Facebook or you can simply type bit.ly slash pdm group. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in.